Rigging is easy, right? Just use Rigify. But what if your character looks like this, or this, or even this? The basic templates don't really work now, and without it, you'd normally have to spend hours manually rigging every single bow. But what if I told you there was another way? A secret feature that can literally rig anything in just a few clicks. So grab the latest copy of Blender and let's get started. What you first need to do is analyze your model and identify all the key body parts. Instead of using one of the basic presets of Rigify, we're actually going to use the individual modules to piece together the perfect rig. Now Rigify comes with a ton of pre-made modules, all with different uses. For example, the basic leg is perfect for humans, but not so good for creatures. That's where the paw module comes in. In this model's case, it has four arms, two heads, a spine and some tentacles. So let's see what modules we can use to get this thing rigged. You can create a Rigify module in two ways. The first way is to press Shift A and create a new bone. Tab into edit mode and delete this. And from here, you can head over to the Armature Properties tab and under Rigify Samples, you can see the full list of modules that you can add. From here, select the basic limb module and press Add Sample. The second way to create your modules is to create them and then in Pose mode, head over to the Bone Properties panel and under Rigify Type, you can set the classification from here. Each module has a different use case. And if you want a more detailed breakdown of every single module, I've made a handy PDF that you can download 100% free and the link will be in the comments. Now that's surely worth a like. Once we have our new module added into the armature, we can move it into place. We can also duplicate this module and move it down slightly for the other arm. Since this model is slightly symmetrical, we can also mirror both of these modules over to the other side by selecting them, heading over to the armature tab and pressing symmetrize. For the fingers, you can either use a basic chain copy, which is just a basic FK chain, or the super finger with a more advanced setup. Either way, since this finger only has two knuckles, we can delete the third joint in the chain and leave it as two bones. Duplicate this across the hands and symmetrize the setup. With the arms done, it's a similar story for the legs, except these aren't normal legs. What we can use here is a spline tentacle module. By default, it comes with four bones and you can add as many bones as you want but just make sure you don't delete the first one, otherwise Rigify won't work. Move this into place and duplicate it for as many legs as we have. We can also symmetrize these two just like we did with the arms. With the spine and head to go, the steps are ultimately the same. Add in the module, place the bones and rename. I went with a simple spine here as the other module is more suited to super realistic characters. For the heads, I used the super head control as it already comes with neck bones. With all the modules made, it's time to parent them together. Starting from the top down, parent the ends of the necks to the top of the spine. Then parent the arms to the next closest bone, in this case, the top two spine joints. Remember to parent the fingers to the hands, and lastly, the legs get parented to the base of the spine. If you try and generate the rig now, you'll see you'll run into an error. This is because you need to assign the bones to a rig UI to keep things organized. If you don't want to make a rig UI, you can just change the UI row to one, and this will allow you to generate the rig. You should now have two armatures. One is the full rig with deformation bones, controls and constraints, and the other is just a set of bones that the main rig uses as a reference to build the rig. You can go back to the original, edit bone placements, add new bones or delete them, and when you hit regenerate, the full rig will update. However, we kind of need to tidy up this massive mess. So let's create a quick UI. Go back to the original armature and tab into pose mode. The rig UI works off bone collections. So start off by creating a new layer for each type of body part. At the minute, we only have one collection that contains all of the bones. And to make it easier, we can select all the bones, press Shift M and remove everything from that initial bone group. Starting from the top down, I made groups for the head, left and right arms, spine and left and right tentacles. You can make as many or as few bones as you want. And to add a bone to a new bone group, select those bones, press Shift M and press Add to Collection. Once you have all the bones assigned to different groups, you'll need to go back into edit mode and under the armature properties tab, scroll down to the UI layout. Again, starting from the top down, we can populate our UI. So select the head bone collection group first and press this arrow here. This adds a button at the top of the UI and the UI rows number control where the button is placed. You can now go through and add the left and right arms by pressing the triangle button below the head. Make sure you've already selected it from either here or here or pressing that button. You can also add buttons onto the same row by pressing this button. Once all of your bone collections have been added, you can regenerate the rig and now you can show and hide your controls with this handy rig UI, making it so much cleaner. 
However, we still have a problem. With some of the modules, we have FK bones, IK bones, and tweaker bones. And ideally, we want to be able to control the visibility of these two. So how do we do that? You guessed it, more bone collections. But these ones are gonna be empty. So in edit mode, add two collections, one named FK and one named tweaks. In pose mode, select the arm and scroll down to the rigified type options. At the bottom, we can add those collections by pressing the plus icon next to the FK and Tweak collections. All you have to do now is head back to the Armature Properties tab and add these collections onto the UI just like we've done before. You can do the same thing for any similar modules in the rig. Just repeat the exact same steps and remember to keep the names of the collections relevant. The last thing to do is to skin the bones to the model. Make sure you have the rig selected when you do this and not the original bones. So in object mode, select the model Shift select the armature and press Ctrl P with automatic weights. I won't be covering weight painting in this tutorial, but here are some basics to get you started. Hide all the bone collections and show the depth layer. This will only show deformed bones. In object mode, select the armature, shift select the model and press Ctrl and Tab to head into weight paint mode. Here are a few shortcuts to get you started. Ctrl and Shift to select the bone you want to paint. Left mouse button click to weight paint. Ctrl left mouse button click to remove the weight and shift left mouse button click to smooth the weight out. With that taster into the world of modular rigging, let's see what else we can come up with. This creature was made using the same basic steps as before, with a few exceptions. The modules for the legs are using paw limbs because it matches the anatomy of the leg. And unsurprisingly, the tail is made up of the tail module, but here's where it gets a little different. The head and neck are made using the head and neck module, but as you can see, it has a lot more bones than the standard setup. You can test how different module types will affect your rig by changing the rig type and regenerating your rig. This is a really good way to test different options and you can also do this before or after you've skinned the model. The spines along the neck and back were made using a basic super copy, a very versatile module that takes in scale, rotation and translation, but only works for one bone and not chains. For that, I used the basic chain copy, an FK chain that works very well with rotation. This same module is used for the toes as they only have two knuckles so a finger module wouldn't make much sense. The generated rig for this model looks something like this, and I think it works pretty well for this character. Now onto the big one, dragons. Again, building on what you should know so far, the legs are using the paw module, tail using the tail module, and spine, head, and neck are using the same modules that we've been using before. One thing I've done a little bit differently here is to add some super copy bones that I've parented to the neck bones. And these act as some tweaker controls that you can use to animate jiggle in fatty areas of the model. The wings aren't even as complicated as you might think. The base is a standard arm parented to a super copy which acts as a shoulder control. The wings themselves are made up of basic chains with some extra controls controlling the membrane of the wing. The tip here is to use the same chain length across all parts of the wing. That way when you select all the controls to animate them they move in a way that you're expecting. We've only just started to scratch the surface on what we can do with Rigify. And if you want to dive even deeper, make sure to subscribe to learn all the incredible things you can do with Blender. So now you have a rig character that you want to animate, but where do you start? Check out this video all about how to get started with animation in Blender. 